On this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab, we're going to learn about SSH keys and how to crack them using John the Ripper. SSH, or the Secure Shell, is a communication protocol preferred by IT professionals everywhere due to its proven track record for security and extensive use of encryption. Typically, SSH communication is encrypted using a normal password, similar to the type of one that you use to log onto your email account or to log onto your computer. Another way to encrypt SSH communication is with the key-based authentication. This sends out a public key to all users trying to log in and a private key, which is stored on the SSH terminal to validate the identity of the user trying to log in to the SSH terminal. Key-based authentication is actually much more secure than a normal password because it is much less susceptible to be brute forced in the same way that a typical password could be. The only feasible way that a key-based authentication could be exploited is if the hacker is able to gain access to the private key directly and able to brute force it using a program called John the Ripper. That's exactly what we're going to be demonstrating today. We're going to be accessing a computer using command injection, grabbing the private key, and cracking it using John the Ripper in order to log on via SSH. In order to follow this tutorial, all you're going to need is a computer with John the Ripper installed. If you have any problems with this video tutorial, check out the article linked in the description. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to how somebody would actually set up SSH to be authorized with a key rather than with a conventional password. So I'm going to go ahead and log on to my um, Metasploitable virtual machine, which is the computer which I will be targeting. So let's go ahead and do that. And so to go ahead and create a SSH key, let's first create a new user that we can play around with. So I'm going to add a new user with my wonder how to um, alias. And so let's put in password for that user. This is going to be different from the SSH password. And then you can go ahead and skip this part. This is just creating a new user on any Linux system. Yes, that information is correct. And then now let's go ahead and change to that user. Okay, so now we can see that I am Kofax. I am no longer MSF admin. So let's verify that the user was created by checking ETC password. And as we can see, we have new information for the username Kofax. Okay, so now that we have this Kofax username, let's use um, SSH keygen to create a encrypted key for logging into SSH. Okay, and we're just gonna use the uh, default directory. And let's just use a simple password just to, for demonstration purposes. So I'm just gonna enter my password in as ABC123. ABC123, obviously a password you would never actually want to use. And there it gives us our fingerprint for the uh, public key or for the private key. And then now we can go and see all the files that it saved by going to SSH. Oop, uh, it's a hidden directory, so. Okay, there we go, sorry about that. So you're gonna go ahead and change directories into SSH. And as we can see, we have our ID file and the uh, public key right there. And so we're gonna create an, we have to create an authorized key file so that we can actually connect to this computer with that key. So let's go ahead and create an authorized key file. And let's give this key file the proper privileges. Okay. And then now all we have to do is edit the contents. We have to copy the contents of ID rsa.pub. And we have to copy these contents to the authorized key files exactly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with some bash commands. Okay. And then let's verify that authorized keys is now a direct copy. And yes, it is. Okay, so now we just have to get this ID underscore RSA file onto our host computer. And this is where it's gonna vary depending on the type of exploit being used. So the most common one I like to use is command injection, which relies on um, a faulty web app being hosted on that computer. But it could be you brute force the uh, password to log onto the computer. Now you wanna be able to log on via SSH, but they have this SSH key. So if you're on this computer, you could one way you could transfer the file to your own computer is by setting up a, a simple HTTP server. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just host it on the default port of 8000. Okay, and now we are serving HTTP on port 8000. Now let's go ahead and open up a terminal window of our own. 
and we're gonna go ahead and grab that SSH file. So I'm gonna do wget http, and then it's the IP address of the target computer, which in my case is 192.168.56.102, port 8000 slash um, IDRSA. Okay, and we saved that file, and let's actually remove these old ones. Let's actually go to a new folder. So let's go to uh, documents, and we'll make a directory. Uh, SSH tutorial. Sorry about that. Okay, and then yeah, let's grab that file again. There we go. And now we can see we have rd underscore rsa in our directory. So we're gonna have to convert this id rsa file into something John the Ripper can use. And in case you don't know, John the Ripper is a very popular open source uh, password cracking tool. But first, we gotta download SSH to John. And we can find SSH2John by going to the Null by Article linked in the description. Oops, not, not a new tab. And if we go down to step three, or step four, install SSH2John on the local machine, we can copy this command and that will install John the Ripper onto our local machine. Okay, and now we can see we have SSH2John.py on our computer. So let's go ahead and convert this ID into something that John the Ripper can use. So we're gonna use Python ssh2john.py and then the name of the target file and what do we want it to come. So we're gonna the hashed version. And now if we cat the hashed version, you can see it's a bunch of garbage, but it's something that John the Ripper can actually understand. So now you're gonna to have to have John the Ripper installed on your computer. It may be already on your um, computer if you have something like Kali Linux installed, but in case you don't, make sure you install John the Ripper Jumbo because this has all the different formats that you can install. You can follow the install directions if you go to doc and install Ubuntu, install Windows, depending on your operating system. So just go to the John the Ripper GitHub page, the doc folder, and then you can find out how to install the Jumbo version from there. I just want to emphasize that it's important you install the Jumbo version so you can actually crack SSH keys. So I'm going to I'm going to go and navigate to my um, John folder. So I'm actually going to copy this hash file to my directory where John is installed, and then now I'm going to go to that directory myself. And if we look, let's narrow it down we can see that our hash file is in fact there. Now we have to actually download a list of passwords that we can use to try to brute force this key. And there's already a short one that you can use on the article provided. So if you go to wget and it's the top 10 uh, most popular passwords, obviously if you're, if you're brute forcing in the wild, you're probably gonna want a lot more passwords than 10. This is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that text file. And now we can actually go ahead and use uh, John to brute force the hash key. So let's go ahead and use John. And then we're gonna specify our word list is dark web 2017 top 10.txt. And we're gonna to wanna to specify the target hashed file. So once we actually get the public key hashed, we can go ahead and move it to our John directory. And it's important that you actually install John the Ripper on your machine. If you already have something like Kali Linux, then it might already be on your computer. But just in case, you can go ahead and Google John the Ripper and you can go to this GitHub page. And then if you go to the doc folder, you can find install directions based for your varying operating system. So Fedora, Ubuntu, Windows, whatever it may be. Um, I already have it installed and I'm going to go ahead and bring all these files to my John the Ripper directory so I can go ahead and actually play with John the Ripper. So let's go ahead and copy idrsa.hash to, uh, where was it? It's going to be src john and then I'm going to go ahead and navigate to that directory myself and then I can see there's a bunch of files here but if I narrow it down to hash 
I can see that my hash file is in fact there. And then also I'm gonna wanna download a list of passwords that I can use to attempt to crack. I can use to try to crack this key. So to do that, I can just go back to the Nullbyte article and copy the word list, which is right here. Let's go ahead and copy that again. Okay, now we see we have that word list and now we're gonna go ahead and actually run John. First, we have to specify what word list we're gonna to use to try to attack it. And then we're gonna specify the target hash file. Okay, and this might take a couple seconds depending on the strength of your graphics card, CPU and all that. And as you can see, it completed and it was able to identify that the password for that key is in fact ABC123. Now to go ahead and log on to the target computer, let's go ahead and try that. So we'll use SSH I ID RSA COFAX 192.168.56.102. Let's go ahead and copy actual key itself instead of just the hash key. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy it from documents uh, SSH tutorial then ID RSA and we'll go ahead and copy it here. And then now if I LS ID, I can see that it's here. Okay, now we can go and log in with the key. Oh, did that wrong. Okay, and it's gonna say ID RSA has bad permissions. This is normal. We just gotta go ahead and use chmod to give it proper privileges. And now we can go ahead and actually use our cracked key to SSH into that computer. And we use the cracked password for that key, and there we go, now we're in. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP Zap, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. So we just learned that using a private public key pair is probably much more secure than using a conventional password when it comes to preventing hackers from accessing your computer via SSH. However, if you don't protect all aspects of your computer, it won't matter if how secure your SSH key is. Because as we saw, if your computer is susceptible to command injection, the hacker will be able to pull your private key and crack it using John the Ripper. Again, if you had any problems with this tutorial, check out the article, which is linked in the description. If you have any ideas for future episodes, hit me up at Twitter at Nick Godshow. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.